Hi everyone, welcome back to the Legend of Zelda 100% walkthrough with me, Austin Chom Plays. In our previous episode, we did uh, pretty much every single side side quest in the game, or at least all the ones possible at this point. We did Fun Fun Island. I made a separate video showing how exactly how you could do it, which I made a lot of rupees very fast. I'm probably going to go buy that piece of heart now. And today we're going to be returning back to Farron to do spirit stuff, which sounds pretty neat. So far we have gathered 10 pieces of heart, 12 cubes, 12 chests, 42 gratuity crackles, 4 medals, and 12 hearts in total. I also went on Amazon and I decided I was going to buy a sword <laughs> for the Joy-Con. <laughs> Alright, hear me out. Hear me out, right? It's it's a, just a thing that holds the Joy-Con. It's full size. You still have access to, to to the SLSR. When you swing it, it it glows a color, like very very briefly. I don't even know if it's picking up on camera. Uh, thank God we're doing 60 FPS videos, right? But here's the thing: it feels nice and it works well. So like when you went like this, it had some mass to it. But now I actually feel like you know I'm I'm pro. Oh. I'm so gonna hit things with this by accident. I'm like properly swinging and I feel like I have like the right angles So I might use this or I might just take the top off. Does the top come off? It spins If it spins enough does it come off? Does it pull? It doesn't pull okay Actually, that feels nice. It's like I'm holding a Wiimote now, and there's there's a green LED in your eye. I didn't mean to break it. It legit f felt like it, it like pops out. Oh, also, Amazon decided that, uh, yeah. Just today, they gave me a notification. They're like, hey, we're gonna ship this. And it's gonna be here today. And I was like, that's cool. The $25 Loftwing Amiibo. As soon as I finished all the side quests that involved me going up and down so much, so I'm excited to see uh, how this is gonna work out. Oh, it's heavy. It's not the biggest amiibo, but it's fairly detailed. It looks really nice, really nice. Sweet, okay. On with the game. Our first order of business, we are going to Farron. Oh, I'm gonna go buy that heart piece now. As I mentioned before, you don't, you don't have to, wait. Wait, you can use the D-pad to rotate the items on this menu screen? <laughs> Why? Why is that even a thing? I mean, I'm not mad that it's a thing. It's just a weird thing that it's a thing. Okay, but yeah, we're gonna buy the last piece of heart because, well, my rupees were full and I showed you how to get a whole bunch of rupees. This game, there's there's not really a, a, like a real true wholesome need to grind for rupees. It's just nice to have the things like as early as possible, in my opinion. Before we make our way to our destination, which is the viewing platform, we're gonna go to the, in the woods. Our first time here in Farron, there was a, what was quite obviously a bombable wall, and now that we have bombs, we can go there for a piece of heart, and that's going to give us our 13th heart, which is a lucky number, so let's go do that right now. Also, to that of my knowledge, there are enemies being all upgraded here and stuff. Like, they're stronger and more powerful, and there's better bokoblins, and moblins are here now, I believe. Nice. Let's go get that piece of heart. And 13. Neato Bajito. Awesome. So now let's head over to the viewing platform. Wait a second. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna scan the thing. I have to tell it that I'm gonna scan things. And then I have to tell it that I'm gonna scan things. Th that was a weird animation. That was almost like the Spirit Realm animation. I mean, Silent Realm. That's where we're going, right? Silent Realm? Point. Great. Viewing platform. Let's go there. Alright, so check it out. Fee is gonna tell us that we need to go find a thing. And we can douse for it, but it's just right there with all of the, uh... With all the blessed b butterflies. Which, I'm totally gonna catch a bunch of them. Nom nom nom. Come here. Come here. I want you. Get in the net. I want you. Get in the net. One can stay. Time to sing you a song of the piano man. Sing us a song tonight. Oh, we're not in the mood for the All right. 
I'm like, I'm like, the, I'm like your drunk uncle when he's out to dinner in New York. Drunk Italian uncle, I should definitely, you know. Can I skip the song? Cannot skip the song. Okay. So now we're gonna stand on this bad boy, we're gonna ready the sword, and we're gonna thrust it down. I realize I now have this adapter to swing a sword, and I've just entered an area that has no sword. So, there's that. Welcome to the Silent Realm! The whole thing about the Silent Realm is uh, those the big scary guys are guardians. And the guardians can't hit you, because they just one hit kill you, right? And then there's also the spotlight guys over there, and the spotlight guys totally snitch on you, and snitches get stitches. And here's the spirit vessel. We get a, have to get a whole bunch of spirits while we're here. And then we get a new power. In addition to that, there are uh, those little small yellow balls that send off like a little little pillar of light, wherever the spirit orbs are. Right, they're spirit orbs? What's, what's the word for these? I don't know the word for them, okay. I got it. Okay, first order of business, we leave the circle. And then as soon as we leave the circle, all the bad guys wake up and we have to get one of the balls. Great, got the ball. A tear of Pharaoh. I said a spirit orb. I was way off. Okay. Also, there is a new farmable item here. It is a, uh, a dusk thing. It looks just like an amber thing, except it's made of dusk. I'm now going to put down five markers that I know that there's going to be locations of these guys. And these are the five that I want to take care of first. On top of the viewing platform, hop down to the right here. There's a weird thing with the lake and a log. I gotta climb up the thing over here on the left. And then there's one right by where we crawl down. So let's go after these bright meow. A light fruit, that's what it's called. So yeah, wherever there's a, uh, a, a, a vessel of pharaoh, it's gonna make a, a beacon for me. Anyways, this is the bad boy I was talking about. Dusk relics, they're like amber relics, but duskier. And I believe now that we've been here for the first time, we now can find evil crystals, which are another random rare treasure that just might show up. We have 90 seconds between each of these, so um, you have time. There is really no rushing. I mean, there's rushing once someone spots you. And these guys, these patrol guys, they're just gonna stay on their designated path and you don't really need to worry about them, as opposed to the ones that are standing still. Those are like sentry bots. And now all the places that there were all of these guys, these stamina fruits before, now their locations are going to make more sense, I promise. Oh, I also have to come here and bomb this. Got it. Cool. This is the log I was talking about. Oh, and this is the bad water. What do they call the bad water? Walking water. If I step in the walking water, guardians will immediately know where I am. Ooh, and this is a goddess plume just chilling here. That's a rare item to be just chilling there. I like that. Cool. But yeah, avoid the water. Also, water is going to be in new places that it wasn't before. Now that I've received all of these bad boys, they are going to remain on the map. Even if I, like, lose and have to restart the challenge, they're all going to be marked on the map. So I'm now going to be going after these five, this one up here, this one up here. We got two down here, one down here. And that's going to leave four left, which are one, two, three, four. Perfect. The whole, like, anticipation, like, pre-marking thing that I'm doing now, on this level, totally not necessary. However, on, uh, so on, on some of the other ones that we're gonna be facing in the future, they may be necessary. Oh, I to totally got one of the ones that I didn't mean to get. That's fine. Link, you could do this. You're fine. I believe in you. Let's hop off to here. Grab this Dusk Boy. There's also like some that are definitely a trap, but you just need to run through and continue through and then you should be fine. Let's go grab this one up here. This is the log that I was talking about as far as one of the shortcuts, like that wall right there used to not exist or used to exist and now it doesn't. And now there's a gate there. Ah, eh, let's just not include that detail. It's confusing. Oh, I think this is one of the guys who, uh, he's one of the sentry ones who will chase you down if he sees you. So just keep your distance from those. I know we also got one down the slidey path right here. Very nice. And that leaves us with the last four, which are gonna be in these locations. I definitely wanna get this one last because this one is like a trap. So yeah, let's get these two right now. See what I mean, it's a trap? I mean, 
the water rises and then goes down, so, you know, it's not like instant death guaranteed, but it is pretty dangerous. And this one's right in front of a guardian. So now all that is left is to run far away and sneakily come grab this. Just show you what I'm talking about. If you get close, you're in like this outer ring of light and then he'll run up to you. You have to be sprinting to outrun them. All the guardians wake up just like they did at the beginning. And if you get a tier, then you're fine. Everyone resets. And then also one of the hard parts is after you get the last one, you have to walk back to the entrance way uh, without being detected. Like that's a huge part of it. And boop. Great, that's the last one. My spirit has grown. If you choose to not use my guide in these like pre-listed areas of where they are, sometimes it's a good idea to leave like the most easily accessible ones for last or in case you get spotted, which again, in this level, not that big of a worry. In some of the future levels, definitely a worry. We completed the thing, and as a reward, we get the water dragon scale. It's a super cool necklace that lets us swim underwater, like a dragon. You like dragons? Here we are, snap back to reality. Well, there goes Fee. I've passed the trial and now have the power to proceed to the location. Yep, the water dragon scales one of the goddess's sacred gifts. Thanks. Well, now that we can swim underwater, we could definitely do that. Hey, it's our, uh, it's our giant friend, Bucha. You can swim through the water like dragons soar through the sky. There must be places here in the woods you haven't visited yet. There definitely is. Namely, this giant tree right here. And before we do that, I want to climb up there and I want to blow up that rock. The rock has been taunting me. I don't even remember what's in here, to be honest with you. Oh, treasure chest. Is it a rupee? It's probably, it's a rupee or a treasure, one of the two. It's a treasure, another goddess plume, neat. Oh, while we are here, we are going to be seeing some goddess cubes that we are gonna be able to get, like that one right there. So on my map, I actually wanna zoom in and I wanna place down a marker right where that one is. I know that there's going to be two more circling this tree. One's visible from the front. Oh, two are visible from the front, right there. Okay, so that's probably that platform and this platform. It sure is, perfect. Now that we have those three marked, let's go ahead and go into this here water. And A to swim. Oh, yeah, I do not want to use motion controls for underwater swimming, that's for sure. And then we just swim inside of the tree. Oh yeah, the using using the left stick significantly better than than using the motion controls. Also, you're gonna see some big old air bubbles under the water, just like Sonic the Hedgehog. You could use those to breathe. Once you get to the end of the path, congratulations, we're inside of the great tree. Isn't that great? And those explosive fish from the desert temple are here, and the upgraded bokoblins are here too. Let's climb up the vine. And my first order of business is I want to clear my path a little bit because I do not want, but they're all too far away. So let's use my slingshot. Nice. Yeah, good job. Okay, let's take out the gust bellows. Let's blow this bad boy. Same concept as swinging on a vine, except now there's this tree and we are going to blow ourselves this way to create momentum to jump over here. I did not blow enough. After successfully blowing enough, you'll be over here, and we are going to start climbing the perimeter by hopping over and climbing up. And as we do, oh, there's a whole bunch of keys. Excuse me, friends. There's gonna be a chest straight up ahead and a quadrubaba. Uh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna use the beetle to, to chop him off. Nice. And a chest with, I believe it's 300 rupees in here. Well, sure diddly dang is. Nice. Now we're just gonna hop back to this branch. And if we look right here, we are right above the second uh, slidey platform. So if you get it just right, hit the hang down button and then let go. You can grab onto here and we're right next to the exit, perfectly. Use the gust bellows, and let's go through this door. Once we're outside, we're now ascending the tree. You can, if you want to, now jump down and go get that. I do not recommend doing it, because there's gonna be a fast travel point later on that we could use, and it's gonna be so much easier. If we climb up, are there bad guys? There is bad guys. 
probably explains why there's their fruits here. So you can chop them down. Noise. After we get to the first platform, there's going to be a beehive up here. Let's go ahead and snatch that. That way they don't, you know, come attack us while we climb up their tree. Hey, look, up there. It's a bird statue that we want. Oh, oh no. Oh no. Bug net. Ow. Bro, come on. Got him. And let's shoot these guys down and climb to the next area. And once we get here, we're going to head back inside of the tree. Oh, this is this is the tight one, isn't it? It is the tight one. OK, so for Moblins, you can defeat them uh, without the upgraded sword, which we don't have yet. It's a pain, but you can run over them. So if you get close, they put their shield down and you just run up above and hop over them. And then we exit <laughs> just like that. And here is our bird statue. And now you're going to see that there is definitely all of these cubes that we could drop to. Oh, oh, Bokoblins. There's Bokoblins here. We got to take them out. And the new stronger blue Bokoblin. You know what? No, nah, we're going to do it. We're going to do it in a little bit. OK, because we do need to hop down here very shortly. So we might as well do it all in one fell swoop. Let's just keep climbing all the way to the top of the tree. And once we do, we have a little bit of a cutscene going on here. He's like, hey, you could look around and see a whole bunch of things, including these beacons. And look, there's a guy sleeping. And let's just go ahead and politely wake him up. Perfect. Yeah, 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 you found me. You're dang right, I did. Gerbil. <laughs> a real life human, I haven't seen you in a while. I'm the Kikwi Hermit, known as Herbal. I'm napping. Can you see me? Sure can. Is that so? Then slap yourself on the back. You know, some Kikwis can't even see me these days. Anyways, I came here for the flame. A human who could see me and ask for the great flame? Listen, do you promise not to breathe the word about this? I promise. All right, I'll tell you. But remember, it's a secret to everybody. Wait, did they just hit me with a Zelda 2 reference? Uh, no, Zelda 1. Zelda 1 reference. It was a shop, I believe. The flame that you seek is most likely Pharaoh's flame. <sighs> The story began long ago. The goddess was still with us. She left the flame in the care of the water dragon so that one day the mighty dragon could pass it on to the one from the sky. Well, good news. We are the one from the sky. Her lair is deep in a lake in the south of these woods. She watches over the flame there. Hey, it's the giant reservoir that we saw before. The gate that leads to this lake is sealed shut to all who are judged unworthy. I'll let you in on a trick to opening the gate. Does it have to do with Pharaoh's symbol right there that's supposed to have a circle in the middle? You have to channel the power of the goddess, and then we have to draw a circle. That's what we have to do. Okay, I'm just going to tell you. <laughs> that's that's where the, the symbol is. Forgot to mention this earlier, but it's important. Her Excellence, the Water Dragon, is very... Persnickety about manners? I don't know what persnickety is. So watch yours. I heard stories of folks who caught her in a fussy mood. They ended up being morning snacks. All right, guy. Bye forever. Where are we in reference to this? Oh, yeah, we could just hop down right here and get this one. Perfect. We, oh, why did it move me? I didn't want to be moved. Either fast travel back all the way up, or if you have your Skyloft amiibo, we're going to fast travel. We're, I'm just going to fly back up, and we're going to do this a couple times. Don't worry, I just did it on the Wii version, and I walked myself. The new spot that we're going to is the Great Tree, so let's go there. So now to get these bad boys, what I want to do is I want to find a place that's directly above it. I want to walk right to the edge, hit the hang down, and I'm just going to go left and right until I know I'm directly above this land. Perfect. Now we can just casually mosey on over. And let's just repeat this two more times. Okay, and once again, actually there's a bunch of platforms under me. I'll probably just hop down to these. And I'll hop down to this lower one. And now I can hop down safely to this one. Great. Okay, for the third goddess cube, you want to line yourself up, but you have to be over this right area. And then you're going to hop down because we need to walk over the tightrope. Walk over the tightrope, activate the goddess stone, and we are good. Uh, you're going to notice that I'm talking a little bit faster here. That's because I accidentally muted the microphone when I... I took a picture of me holding my Joy-Con up to put it on Twitter and uh, the top of it, as you know, is broken and it fell off and it hit the mute button. 
Anyways, while we're here, I might as well show you the exact symbol that they're talking about that we are going to need to draw a special thing. The, the big kiwi said and the symbol is right here if you played uh, a variety of the older games especially ocarina of time you've probably seen this symbol before fantastic now we're going to make our way to the sky and then we are going to hop back down and we're going to make our way to the southernmost point possible once we're here you're going to see this big old door and i just put down a more a marker here and we're going to draw a circle inside of here it needs to be a big circle. If you're having trouble and it's not recognizing, chances are your circle is not big enough. Also, you kind of have to color it inside with, with some squiggles. So best of luck with that, friends. From here, this is gonna open up this whole corridor to a reservoir to some waterfalls and we're gonna hop inside. And now we have Lake Floria added to our map. For swimming, I'm going to recommend switching to button-only controls. And in this first area, you don't actually have to do anything until it throws you off of this waterfall. Even if you just put the controllers down, it'll just progress you to here. When you land to this new area, there's going to be this little sea fish, seahorse looking guy, octopus, Sally, his name is Jellif, like jellyfish, but just without the ish at the end, it's just Jellif. And Jellif is going to bring you through several areas that kind of teaches you how the water controls work. If you are turning motion controls off, if you push in the left stick, you can do this spiral attack, as opposed to if you are using motion controls, you just swing your left Joy-Con to the right, and then you will do it. You don't have to swing your right Joy-Con at all, just the left one. Anyways, you're gonna do that maneuver at this wooden door that he hid behind, and uh, you're gonna break it. He's gonna acknowledge that the only way that you could do it is with one of the water dragon stones and he's gonna be like, hey, you're probably cool. Just follow me, no problem. Now that we're in this room with a whole bunch of rocks and a whole bunch of these blowfish guys who explode, all you have to do is do one of the spiral attacks into them, hit them toward the rocks and get a whole bunch of rupees. And if you break the one at the northernmost area, you can make your way out of here. Also, there's a bird statue in here, but it doesn't fast travel is just a save so save if you want oh and there's also perella the other jellyfish i don't know if you actually have to break her out or if you could just you know go to the next area you probably have to break her out because jellyf says something about it once you break through the north door there's going to be a, a a little gate that you need to hop over like free willy good job i believe in you in this room, if you head to the left, there's going to be a burb statue. Make sure to save here. Also, this one is going to be activating to the sky. There's a treasure chest here with a piece of treasure, like rare treasure. And then also there's a goddess cube here. Activate the goddess cube. And that is going to be the fourth one of this area that we've activated in just this video. Neat. When you're all set, hop in the water to the north and we're going to progress to the next room. Once you hop over, you're going to see this big old fish with an X on his head. Just Z target it and then do your spin attack at it and then it's gonna get all dizzy and then you're gonna do it again and then he's gonna be KO'd. Good job. From here, swim close to the door, wait till Jellif reaches you and then Jellif's head is actually a key. Jellif is going to open your way into the water dragon's chamber, Farron. There's gonna be some text with you and Farron. Farron is gonna say that she was attacked by Garahim and now she's injured and she needs to heal up. She's inside of this giant tub of sacred water and inside of the tub of sacred water, uh, there's not enough water left. So you need to go find water and Fee's going to add it to a dowsing thing for you. Also, before you leave this room, if you look to the left, there's two treasure chests. One of them is going to be a uh, ruby and the second treasure chest is going to be evil crystal. Nito Pegito. I think we need that for... Oh, what was it? Was it the slingshot? It was either the slingshot or it was our net. One of them needed that, one of them needed a dusk relic. Once we are all set from here, we're just going to be walking out on land through the one exit on land. And boom, there's a bird statue here. And that's the Floria waterfall. It allows you to go to, go to the sky. Oh, also there's some butterflies here. Must be a secret. What's your monster part, friend? It's a claw, cool. Uh, they say drawing a symbol of love will open certain walls, will heal wounds. Oh yeah, we know about this. It's still not a mechanic that we've actually visited yet. And we cannot access this area until we help out the water dragon. But if we head over this way, there's going to be yet another 
uh, shortcut point that we can activate. And fantastic. Now, we're gonna backtrack back to the waterfall. Oh, there was a grasshopper. Oh no. He committed livent. Wait, can I just walk through here and farm grasshoppers? Because I don't even think I have a single grasshopper yet. Oh yeah. Boom. Grasshopper farming. Got him. Neato. That's the last bug I needed. And the evil crystal was the last treasure I needed. How great is that? Anyways, let's head over to the sky because we need to head back inside of Farron. And actually, we need to head all the way back to the forest temple. So let's go there. In case you haven't figured out, the sacred water is going to be at the uh, the spring at the back of the temple. So that's our destination. Oh, Fee's even going to mark it on the map where we have to go. Great. And there's been a, a few changes to this place since we last left it. So, per oh, <laughs> that's right. There's more enemies here now. Oh yeah, I am able to aim my sword so much more accurately with uh, with this heavier controller now. Oh, and are we gonna finally encounter our first wall? Yes, we are. So we're gonna play our harp here. Skyward Strike, just like we did. And now you could draw a whole bunch of things. Uh, bombs, arrows, a whole bunch of stuff. I typically always draw rupees though. Oh, uh... Okay, well no, not this time, because I'm doing the worst job ever. What's that gonna give me? Oh yeah, when it doesn't know what you're trying to draw, it just gives you three hearts instead. <laughs> Let's hop out into the main room. You're now going to see a Bokoblin archer in the back. You can actually just completely avoid him. We're gonna go to the room to the right. Hey, Quartz. Quartz is gonna say that he had a key, and he totally lost it. Let's hop around here and jump into the water. We're now going to swim down. Take care of our big old jellyfish boy that is so annoying. And we're gonna go into the same hole that we went into when we first came to the temple. We're gonna climb up these vines and this digging spot has been here since we started the game. And inside of it, boom, small key. Back out of the main room. We're just gonna run forward. If you keep running, the archer is pretty much never going to hit you. Use the key on the back door. And this is going to bring us back to the room where the beetle was. Fun fact, after you complete this temple, go back into that room. There's going to be an optional boss fight that's going to give you rare treasure each time, which is pretty neat. You remember this temple. You know where we are. We're going to the northernmost room. Oh, with these guys. Uh, you could actually take some cover behind one of these mushrooms and take out the tough beetle and then send the tough beetle over there. There's a bomb. And we're gonna... Oh, wow, that actually worked out perfectly. They shot it down, but the bomb fell and uh, destroyed them. Let's go get that water. Oh no, the room where we fought Girahim before. There's now three stall guys. Oh no. This is, a, this is a rough one. I mean, I could try to like isolate them or something. Oh wait, no, I have bombs now. That's right. These guys do not like bombs. Like, that's the number one thing they do not like. Because when a bomb explodes by them, they lose their limbs and they drop their swords. The hard part is getting them to... I mean, I guess I could just hit the bomb. That works too, right? Ow. Fine. Place the bomb down. There we go. That's what we want. And now, big circle moves in the middle. Let's do another bomb maneuver. It didn't get the guy in the front, only the two in the back. They were shielding. That's one down, two down, and three down. GG. Let's break open these jars for some hearts and make our way to the back room. Oh, Fee's gonna detect some sacred water. Neato. We're gonna make our way into the water. And you know that one area of water that has some uh, some fairies around it? Well, guess what? This is magic water. And Fee's saying, hey, let's go get that water back to her. Are you gonna fast travel me out? Ah, oh, you're awesome, Fee. Thanks for that, buddy. Let's head back to the sky, because we actually have some sky errands to do. I know you guys love sky errands. Right, first things first. In the sky, we have this one inside of Thunderhead that we can get. We have this one that we can get. Oh, I remember this one. We don't supposed to be able to get this one, but we can get this one. 
Let's go get that one first. Okay, we've already been to this one before, but there is now a thing. If we hop off and we hug this side closest to the chest, but we go inside of the hole, we can land here. You're probably going to take some damage, and it's designed for you to come here when you have a, an ability to, you know, use a some sort of device to grapple your way up. And that's a piece of heart. Sweet, dude. Let's hop on down here, because this is obviously an area for us to play the harp. Boing, what up? It's another claw. Thanks, buddy. They say uh, it's possible to summon fairies by drawing three triangles on certain walls. Oh, yeah, if you draw the Triforce, you get fairies. It's a, it's a pretty hard thing to draw, to be honest. The chest inside of Thunderhead is going to be getting us a rupee medal. The rupee medal makes it so that rupees show up more often because you know how much of those we need, right? After we get those two chests, we are going to head directly back to Skyloft. On my notes here, I'm supposed to have three chests that I can get. There's this one that we're not able to get yet. There's this one that we can literally just hop off of there and then get it. And there's one in the storage shed over here that should show up on the map. Did I forget to get this one? This was, this was an Elden. Well, it's fine. We wouldn't have been able to get the chest until now. Uh, hang on. Let me go to, let me go to Elden and see if I forgot this. Oh yeah, we totally forgot this. Now that I'm thinking about it, when we were going around and getting all the pieces of the key, we went around the right side of the slide. And then I said, we were going to make our way back to the top, but we got the last piece of key and I was so prioritized with doing the digging game that I forgot that we were going to go back up and go get that uh, that goddess cube. Unfortunately, we do need to make our way back up to the top because there is a goddess cube that we need to get from up here. But anyways, from the entrance, we're going to make our way over here to the big old slide. We're going to go down the left side. And if we hop down here, boom. Goddess cube that I forgot. Thanks Zelda Dungeon for listing those. All right, let's go back to Skyloft. Here in Skyloft, if we look at our map, there are three chests. This one we can't get, but this one we can. Also, we get this one on the left. So in order to get this guy, we're going to hop into the water. And you probably saw this entrance way down here many, many times before. And you wondered, how could you possibly get in there? Well, now that we can actually dive under the water, which apparently that's something that some of the links can't do, like, I don't know, the Breath of the Wild one. Uh, yeah, we can do this now. Nito Bajito. And we got a piece of heart. And another treasure chest, which I think has a rupee in it. Yep, sure does. Great. In order to get this chest that's located over here, on the left side of the map, we're just gonna run off of this platform, hold up, and you should land right on the island. Nice little face plant there. Another? Yep, another rupee. Okay. And we could just do that straight back. Nice. Uh, if you remember, this is where we got one of the Gravitude Crackles at night. Now that we are at the bazaar, we actually have every single upgrade item in the game. So that means that we could finally upgrade our bug net, because... <sighs> why do I need more ancient flowers? Why do I not have ancient flowers right now? I always had ancient flowers. The scatter shot we can upgrade, because we have plenty of everything, so let's go do that now. Now it's the mighty scatter shot that's going to pepper a wide range. Isn't that neat? And the sacred shield we can upgrade because now we have dusk relics. And now it's the divine shield. And I think we can upgrade the divine shield as well right now. Oh, we're missing a monster horn uh, that we can't farm those yet. We can very shortly. Bird feathers we can farm, but we can't farm monster horns yet. I just never upgraded my seed satchel. I need more ornamental skulls. Yeah, just that, and ancient flowers. Okay, well, I'm gonna go get these ancient flowers real quick. I'm pretty sure the best place to find the ancient flowers is gonna be the Temple of Time, so let's head on over there. I'm gonna pull out the scatter shot. Really, out of all of them? All of them missed. Good job, Austin. And that's going to be one of them. Oh, is this a place for me to play a song? Sure is. Ooh, and he gave me an evil crystal. Thanks, buddy. It's been said the best way to snag a rare insect is the big bug net. Thanks. You mean the exact thing I'm trying to upgrade, right, Meow? We're going to scatter shot the one at the back of the gorge. No, not a single flower for your boy? Me being your boy? What about this one? You have to have something for me, right? Yeah, there's one. Oh, here's the one that I wanted. Great. And then this one, we could just grab with a tough beetle. 
And now let's use our bird statue to go back to Skyloft. Oh, but don't I need two more ornamental uh, skulls? We're gonna go to Elden for those. We're gonna go to the temple entrance. There's essentially like a kind of a gauntlet that you can run over and over, which is super nice. It, one, you have the option of just going in here, coming out, and then fighting these Fubo Coblins. The problem is that's a temple and there's sort of like a, a long going in and coming out process. It's not just, you know, zoning through a door or anything. After these three are cleared out, you could either head inside or, much more fun option, we run down here. We knock these three off or defeat them, whatever you want to do. Two more down here and then two more below them. And then we hop down here, turn around. There's another Bokoplin encampment where we could defeat a few of them. Of course, make sure to have the treasure medallion while doing this. Still none yet, but we still have this guy here and his one friend on the way down. And then we just keep running down. There's a few keys here, because who doesn't also want a monster horn? And then there's a bird statue at the bottom. This time, unfortunately, I did not get any. But it's very easy to run this over and over, and I have gotten three on the same run, so... Do I have... I, I have my treasure medallion on, right? Yeah, I have the treasure medal. Also, I was talking with some of my Zelda friends, and we still don't have, like, a firm resolution if the treasure medal and the cursed medal stack. We still don't know. I think they do because of what the cursed medal does, but, you know, we haven't seen it definitively in code or guidebooks or anything. But yeah, I'm just going to run this again. And this time running it... I got two, so it works. I know it works, I've done it. I've done it a bunch. Just, you know, it's not always the best. Oh, also this time the amber was a goddess plume. So yeah, getting some good drops, dog. Gondo, I finally came back with the things. Great, make me a bigger net. Now I can catch bugs more efficiently. And, oh, I needed three skulls. Fine, whatever. I don't care about the seed satchel. <laughs> really don't. Yeah, I believe that's it. That's all that we can do in this area. Everything else is going to require us to actually go over to uh, give the special water to our homegirl dragon. That goes ahead and that unlocks the next area. So actually, this seems like a good place of any to, 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 to wrap things up for now. Well, great. Guys, thank you so much for checking out this episode of Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword Walkthrough 100% with me, Austin John Place. If you found it helpful, do me a favor, hit the like button down below. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications. Until next time, Austin John out.